Hi, welcome to this week's edition of PHQ questions from the personality hacker community. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And Addison, let's get right to our question today. Hi, Joel and Antonia. First, I simply cannot give your podcast enough praise. Thank you both for giving me some truly fantastic insight and ideas into myself and others. Second, I think your page should have a donate function for people like myself, poor grad students, who cannot afford to buy a course but would nonetheless like to show our appreciation with a small contribution. Third, I had the most beautiful idea this week, inspired by your podcast. I have no one to share it with, for I don't know anyone familiar with both emergent systems and Jungian theory. If you don't understand it, it's okay. Having one of those INFJ moments where I can't just find the right words, but I'm working on it. The quote is from Robert Langland's book, A Different Universe. He describes how the fundamental laws of physics themselves are emergent. At the end of the book, he made a music analogy. It struck a chord in me, yes, pun intended. I have seen musical references popping up all over the place connected with emergence. Reading this quote is when it clicked, the circle of fifths. I attached a drawing of the idea. In a nutshell, there are four parts. Part one, our plot is the dominant inferior dynamic. The inferior drives the dominant. We see this in nature too. Second law of thermodynamics, energy moves from high potential to low potential. If energy wasn't moving from high potential to low potential, nothing would happen. This is essential for flow. Part two, there are 16 types and eight plots in Jungian theory. Part three, the circle of fifths has 16 keys. You count C twice. Eight keys with flats, eight keys with sharps. Part four, there is a perfect fifth a perfect fourth, octave, and unison. I see it as those four terms, perfect fifth, unison, perfect fourth, and octave. So perfect fifth is the dominant function. Unison is the inferior function. Perfect fourth, the inversion of the perfect fifth, is your partner or your other half. And octave is the humanity as a whole. I love this idea even more as music is a universal language that all humans understand. Thank you again. Cheers, Taylor. Thanks, Taylor, for the question and uh, all the nice words, the kind words you gave us too. We really appreciate that. Uh, so, as far as the as far as the music the music piece, the man, you your brain is operating at a level that I am not. Uh, I am not privy to as far as musical theory. I am not a musician, and I don't, Antonio. I don't think you're following along all the theory of this musical stuff either. Are you? Uh, yeah, my my two years of piano lessons and my preteens did not prepare me for this question. <laughs> and I, I mean, I think it's a really intriguing question about basically marrying a couple different models and seeing if there's any sort of you know universal synchronicity sure. in these patterns. And I think it's, I think it's a really intriguing question. I didn't completely. I couldn't completely keep up with all the theor- the music theoretical aspect of it, to be totally honest. And that said, I think there, I mean, I, I know that there are musicians in our audience. Yeah. And I'd love to see if Taylor's onto something. I'd love to see what people have as feedback. So this one is going to be a bit of a crowdsource PHQ. I think it was worth reading to our audience to see if they've got some really intriguing ideas or if it's going to spark some really awesome conversation. And also, I think, I mean, I don't, I have no self-consciousness about admitting that I'm just not up on music theory enough to be able to add intelligently to the conversation. It's definitely worth exploring. And if you've got, you know, something that this triggered in you as you're thinking about this, uh, we can use the the format right below this PHQ on the personalityhacker.com page there's a uh, comment section. We could use that as a discussion forum. Uh, and also, we'll probably cross-post this PHQ to Facebook. So either of those places could have some discussion around this specifically and matching this you know, type theory with music theory. And, and, and Taylor, what, what's great about this, and I think the other reason we read this on the air, is this is so near and dear to our hearts here at Personality Hacker. We love taking models and frameworks of one thing and juxtapositioning them with something else and seeing if there's connections. Like, we've done this a lot with... The Graves model, personality type, Enneagram, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We, we try to see if there's correlations or at least some crossovers in different different places. And so it's exciting because this is kind of how we think already in trying to figure out if there's synchronicities. And I think that our audience might come up with some really interesting stuff. And as you keep developing this, we'd love to hear more from you. 
There was an attachment along with this email, I believe. There was uh, something that Taylor had written down, and I think we'll post that on underneath the PHQ as well. So a if visual. you want, yeah, if you want a visual component to what he's talking about, I believe that he provided something. And honestly, I mean, maybe this is out of everybody's like <laughs> musically. I don't, I'm not sure. I, I like to think our audience is filled with incredibly intelligent people who have a very, you know, a varied background of education and ability to theorize it's, and pattern recognition. So I like to think that we could crowdsource this and see if there's anything here. I think, was it called Shine? There was a movie that Jeffrey Rush was in in the 90s, in the 1990s. It was about this, like, brilliant musician, pianist. He was just it, brilliantly intelligent. I think it was an independent film. I remember seeing it when I was a teenager and watching it. And uh, uh, maybe you're like that guy. You're just so brilliantly musically inclined that we can't follow. I don't, I don't know. I yeah. really know nothing about music. Right. This might be super basic for music people. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is so simple. He's talking about something so basic. But uh, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit beyond. The, the other thing that I want to mention, too, you, you had mentioned something. And I think this is like the third time someone has asked us to put a donate button on our website and has suggested this. Mm. Uh, I've got it a couple times, and I've actually seen it on other some other websites before. And um, this is interesting because we are a we're a business. We're mm-hmm. for, we're not a nonprofit. We yeah. we don't we don't we're not a five hundred one c three nonprofit here in the United States. We can't give you a tax receipt for a donation. Uh, you can't write it off on your taxes. It would just be going into the business itself. And that when we were mentioning this off the air, Antonia, you were you were you know, you were discussing this. You said, let's have a little conversation around this because you didn't know how you felt about it. I, I don't, I don't know if I feel good about it, about having a donate button. I, I love the idea that people want to give value back. However, in the spirit of radical honesty, one of the reasons why we give value up front and, you know, do podcasts, uh, other than the fact that we love it and other than the fact that we really enjoy being able to share our thoughts and opinions with a, a broader audience it's also, you know, it's a lead generation. Like we have a podcast because it gains attention to our website. So it feels like a win-win, right? Like it's lead generation, people, we gain greater attention and people benefit from our free line content. They benefit from the podcast. You know, if somebody says, hey, it's been great and I really enjoyed it, that's awesome. However, it's not like, I mean, I love the idea that people wanna give back and have a sense of reciprocity. And at the same time, I don't know how I feel about having them donate because this is, I mean, we have a business here. Like we're actually, we are, it is a for-profit business and this is part of the business model. So I don't know. Do I feel icky about the idea of a donate button? Like, I don't know. I just, I want to make sure that we're on the up and up. I want to make sure that everything we're doing is transparent transparent, and that we're not taking advantage of anybody. And I don't know. I just I'm I like the idea of having a conversation around it and maybe even getting some feedback. Yeah. Crowdsourcing that piece too because I I I mean I, if I feel icky about it that doesn't mean that I should feel icky about it. However, if I feel icky about it that could be a sign of something. It could be a red flag. So, I don't know. I'm I'm still really ruminating over this concept. I I know we're entering a space where you know the the model that we have right now which is to pay a certain amount to get, you know, the amount back like our price point for the personality, you know, the personality development starter kits, our price point is out of some people's range. And we we totally acknowledge that. We understand that. And we've been trying to find ways to increase its value as opposed to scaling back the amount. Yeah. Because we want to make sure that, on a, I mean, I, I keep using the word honestly as if I'm not speaking honestly at any other, other time. It's this a bad habit. This is the only honest podcast this ever. Is, it's the only time I'm going to use the word honestly because every other word I say is a complete and utter lie, which is ridiculous. So I'm going to try to drop that word from my vocabulary. That said, the the reason why we have the price point where we have it is because it is not a curiosity. It's not a tire kicker program. It is a personality development starter kit, meaning that we want people to take it seriously. We want people, even if it's like even just a hair painful for them, we want them to be able to get the most out of it and actually apply the information. And as a coach, as somebody who's done coaching for a very long time now, I've recognized that if somebody is, say, you know, getting coaching for free or a very small amount of money, I've noticed that they don't appreciate it. Like they don't actually apply the information. However, if they if it hurts just a little, like if it's in their price range but it hurts just a wee bit, 
I've noticed that they take it a lot more seriously and they do yeah. a lot of application. So one of the reasons why we set the price point where we did is because it's a bit of a stretch for some people, is because it's going to be something that people take more seriously and actually apply. And that's why when somebody goes, you know, if we get a refund request, which is, hey, I didn't really get a lot of benefit out of this. I already knew all this content or maybe, you know, I've already applied all this in my life and this wasn't anything new. We are more than happy to refund them their money because it wasn't, it, it didn't fulfill their expectation and we want to make sure that we're fulfilling people's expectation and actually doing what we, what our goal is, which is to make sure that people are applying the information, the content and, and bettering their lives. But that said, it is a price point that's out of some people's range. So we've even talked about ways to make it more affordable. Yeah. We've talked about potentially going to a subscription service or a subscription model. Um, we've talked about, I mean, yeah, I there's think, a lot of different possibilities here. I, I think uh, f- you know, when you're when you're in business, one of the things that comes up is when you're first starting out of business, a lot of times getting anybody as your customer is the first goal. And I think I think much differently about business in that it's it's it has to be a match both directions. Like as somebody who's purchasing a product from us, the 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 person if you're if you decide to purchase something from us, you you have to determine that we're a match for you. But it also goes the other way that you as a as a customer, as a person that's coming into the tribe, the inner circle of joining in with Personality Hacker and saying you guys have good content, we also are we're entering in a relationship with you too. And I have no compunction against what I call firing customers or saying, hey, I don't know if this is a match. I feel like you're this is not a good match for us on our end and probably on your end too. You just don't realize it yet. So let's how about we don't do this transaction? I have no problem telling people not to buy from us or not to engage on a uh, on a level of of investment financially, and and I think that flies a little bit counterintuitive to most people how they think about business. It's like you want every customer you can get, and I don't I just don't see it that way. It's vibrational alignment for me. It's are we on the same path in life? We're joining in something, and I I really do see it as you're 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 kind of entering into a tribe with us. You're joining a community of people who are of like minds, and that means we protect that community a little bit. And the price point for me, it, it indicates a, a level of I guess it's vetting people so that they aren't making an impulse buy. They're, it, they're, it's causing people before they purchase at the price point the current starter kits are at, which is the lowest price point thing I think we sell except for one like one ebook on gift giving. But it's the entry point and it's a little higher than most entry point for most businesses. And that's by design because I want, I want people to pause and say, do I want to enter into, do I want to invest in this? And if they say yes, they're probably more likely to implement it. They're probably more likely to take it serious, like you said. So that's that's the reason why our price points are the way they are. And when people have said, can you cut the price points? We've said no, but instead what we'll do is we'll just keep increasing the value. So now we've added a ton of value. We're continuing to add value to the different starter kits. And that's that's what we're looking for. This, I don't have a problem, by the way. If we go back to the, uh, the donation piece, uh, it doesn't trigger me, I think, in the same ways. Uh, I... One early lesson I learned in my youth growing up is my grandfather was a very giving person. And I remember he would just he would just hand me money as a kid, right? He'd hand me like $10 bills or whatever just to give me money as a kid. He was very giving. And my family was very giving. And I remember having a difficult time with that. Like, why why is he like, I'd re- I would reject gifts, like financial gifts, reject things from people. I remember my dad pulling me aside, probably my preteen years. And he said, Joel, you are robbing other people of blessing. You're robbing other people of benefits. You're robbing other people of feeling good about giving something to you when you reject that. And I guess that's, that's I always keep that in mind to say that if someone wants to return value to us through a donation, even though they know it's not a nonprofit, it's their way of saying, I value what you guys have put into this up front. I value the free content, all the work you put into the podcast, because we don't, you know, we don't get a salary for doing the podcast. We get we get paid when we make sales. It's a premium content model like HBO would be, right? And it's not like advertising yet. We'll talk about that in a future podcast. So this is like a way so people can give back at the place that they're at in life. And I, I guess I don't have as much compunction about it. I don't have as much resistance to that. Um, I think it really matters how we couch it. I think mm-hmm. if we talked about it, it would have to be a It'd be framed in, hey, make sure you realize this is not a nonprofit. Make sure you, this is our business model. This is how we make money. If you'd still like to donate, here's an option to do that. I feel like that would be upfront and transparent for people. And then they could give value back if they chose to. Yeah. I guess in my mind, I, I imagine just like a donate here button 
on the front page or every page you go to. And <laughs> I think it would have to be couched carefully to honor basically what you're saying, which is, I mean, in a situation like that, of course, I have no problem receiving. I love giving and I love receiving and I love reciprocity and I love I love anything that makes people feel good about those kinds of transactions. So I've I've no beef with that. There when you, when it's a one-to-one personal relationship, that's a very different situation than how things appear on in your business. Sure. And so I would want to make sure that it wasn't an appearance of, "Hey, we'll take your money however we can get it." <laughs> Well, you know, like, well, you want to want to buy? Well, then donate. Like, how do we get your money? And I just want to make sure that it's it's clear that, I mean, we're definitely, I mean, we, we make no bones about, we want, we have a for-profit business. We'd like to continue to make profit. And there's, there, we don't see any problem with that. And also, we, we want to make sure that we're in integrity with how we do business. Sure. We want to make sure that the way that we do business is at a different level. And, and... It's it's because we see no problem with prof, for profit organizations or companies. We see a pro, we see a problem when the, the the almighty dollar or the bottom line is your prime mover. And so, if we can make it so that integrity and win wins are the prime mover, then we feel like you know we feel like the affluence will come with that, right? Like it'll just that will be a nice emergence, but it's not the end game. So I think as long as, you know, if we were to say choose to do donate button, as long as there was plenty of context around it and like it was really radically, you know, like radically honest about the whole situation and really upfront with that it's for profit, like you said, I think I'd probably feel less, less icky about it. But it's still something that like I, you know, it's still a question in my mind. The other thing I like about it too is it removes the transactional element of value exchange. So it's not dollar amount here for product A here. It's because we've already removed that element from a direct, like you don't have, you're listening to this right now. You haven't paid a dot, you've paid your internet connection and you've paid your iPod, iPad or iPod or your computer listening to it on, but you're not paying directly to hear this. So we've moved our content into the realm of we're just giving it freely. We're giving out value freely. And we don't know how that will be returned to us. And if it's returned through a donation independent of the podcast, maybe the donation is about an article somebody read. They were like, I really like what they're doing. I want to donate. Ten dollars to this or whatever, it removes it so it's not the the money piece, the financial piece isn't so transactionally based, and it's more of a gift or sharing economy focus. And I mean, that's in an ideal world, that's how I'd love everything to function. You have to be somewhat transactional because that's how people can measure the value exchange. But what if we lived in a world where value exchange wasn't measured A to A or B to B? It was more, you know, one person over here is donating for something that this person got value for. In other words, it's a, it's kind of a pay it forward all the way around. So what I like about it is it's trending toward a world I think is coming anyway, in that we're all going to be focused on higher levels of value and money will not be an issue as much on the base. Like I could see a world in 50 years where everybody at the base isn't concerned about money because resource is so abundant that it is more about sharing and 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 gifting value to people that are doing and, and vibrating at the level you want to vibrate at. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, the only thing I would have to say about that, the only the only thing that I would not 100% agree with you on is that the audience does pay something. They, they pay attention. And attention in this world is extremely high value. Correct. And so... Yeah, they're paying the internet, they're paying their, you know, whatever, whatever the setup cost was for them to listen to podcasts in general. But the high currency that they're paying for our podcast is that they're listening to us. So attention is valuable, right? Like everybody's trying to get your attention, everybody. And it's because attention is valuable. So I do think that they're paying that. By the same token... Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with everything else that you said. I'm 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 with you on that. I I just I don't know. I'm just I'm still thinking about it's it. It's a hang up for you. We'll work on. <laughs> I'll bring you to my side eventually. But what do you think? You're listening yeah. here. You're you're joining in. You're listening to this discussion. So what do you think uh, as far as the donate stuff? Also, you know, we we really did deviate. Taylor, you had a lot of stuff in your question. You were thanking us at the beginning. You talked about the donate, then you talked about the music theory. Unfortunately, we are not in a position as much to talk about the music theory, but I still think that's a very interesting question. So this is a really interesting free form PHQ this this week. And I know it's a little bit more open-ended and not as direct question with an answer. It's a little bit more discussion-based. But again, you're, you've been listening to us for a while, most likely. If you're a first-time listener, just understand this isn't our normal format. If you've been listening to us for a while, you know that we really go with what is like kind of currently in our minds and we talk about it and we want you to be a part of that process of the discussion. So 
if you would do me a favor, do us a favor, come over to the personality hacker dot com website and and let us know about these two issues if you've got some stuff to talk about around this um what we could probably do is i mean i think it could all be talked about in the same phq i yeah. know there's two different issues going here but that would be a nice big discussion mm -hmm. and i want to see things being more combined with the community so i think this would be work well yeah. uh, for everybody okay. to be conversing around this yeah so come over to personalityhacker.com and leave your comments leave your questions leave your feedback about what we've talked about here around the donate issue value exchange and I'd love to hear some more from musicians and people that are into music theory. Yeah, definitely. We, we're crowdsourcing Taylor's question too. So let's not let's not overshadow Taylor's question about the musical theory for the donate piece. But that said, we'd love to hear we'd love to hear what you have to say on either both whatever issues. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you would like to ask your own PHQ question where we could answer it on one of these shows, you can go over to personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. There's two different ways to do it right now. You can record your question. We can actually play the audio live on the air, uh, assuming it is quality enough, which it should be if you're using the application we have there. And also you could just type your question into a online form. We're trying to make a little more formality around this because we're getting a lot of questions in. We want to make sure we get to as many as we can uh, throughout the weeks. So those are the two, that's the place where you can go and ask your question. Personalacker.com forward slash questions. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. Thanks for joining us on PHQ Questions from the Personality Hacker community. We will talk to you very soon.